Aviation in general is a dangerous occupation, absolutely. But just the heavy load that these aircraft have on them, and you get a fire that's creating its own storm, and particularly in these mega wildland fires, they can't see. It's a dangerous job out there. Straight to the latest on those devastating wildfires out west. How dangerous is wildland firefighting? Lace up your boots, get your hard hat on, throw your pack on, and run into the woods while it's burning. What we do from the air is very dangerous. I've seen a fire go from two acres to 300 acres in 10 minutes. It's consuming so much fuel that trees are blowing up in front of it from the heat. A lot of times, we're not going to be able to put the fire out. All we're doing is helping the people on the ground. Fighting fire from the air, uh, it's a critical component in wildland fire. They're helping the guys on the ground for sure. You know, the eyes in the sky, keeping the firefighters safe, um, whether it's the air attack or the helicopter that comes on scene or the jump plane. They're also, the rapid response is critical to try to catch these fires when they're small. You're cleared in. When we're actually doing the drop, we are descending down just like you're going to land, basically, to only 60 feet above the canopy. And you're going 140 miles an hour. Andy Taylor, he owns a single engine air tanker company. That's all one big tank where the retardant goes. These doors right here are the full length of this gate. There's two of them that open up this way. Because you're releasing about 5,000 pounds instantaneously, you're gonna have to be putting a little bit of forward stick in to counteract the load coming out of the airplane. Either that or the airplane's gonna pitch straight up. Where they're best used is in initial attack. Fire, cloud, mouth shots to fire, Dunsmuir fire. So when a fire first starts, fire. the order will come down through that local dispatch center. Time is 1213, and we're coming out of the pit with 725 gallons. Copy. Or the faster he can get on scene, the smaller that fire is going to be before it has a chance to pick up a head of steam and get away from us. Estimated time en route is 11 minutes. You're always expecting the unknown. You don't know where it's at. You're going to get an along to tell you the location of the fire. There's a possibility once in a while you might even get the luxury of having the elevation of the fire because there's somebody on the ground already. But we don't know what we're getting ourselves into. We don't know what the wind's going to be like and how that's going to affect turbulence. And we don't know any of the environmental conditions that are going to be over the fire until we actually get there. That's why we've had people being in the wrong spot at the wrong time, and we've had fatalities. When an uh, injury or a fatality happens on a big event there, everybody's ears are out there. They know what's going on. Uh, they hear the radio traffic. There was a close friend of mine that was involved in an accident and I found out how WFF participated in all the help to him and his family. And um, uh, that struck me deeply 
and I thought they did one heck of a job. Wildland Firefighter Foundation's main mission is to help the families of uh, fallen and injured wildland firefighters. A few years ago, uh, the statistics in uh, wildland fatality aviation was 52% uh, of that. These are all the aviation that's gone down. And these lives aren't lost because of shoddy firefighting. The loss of this life is dealing with Mother Nature. Obviously, being a nonprofit, we're up against funding all the time. Without Coors Banquet, uh, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing on the scale we're doing. There's so many more people on the landscape now. Uh, we just can't let fires burn unchecked. We do have to address them. And a lot of people look at you like you're crazy and why you would love doing something like that. It's very rewarding to be able to do something to help protect people's lives. <laughs>